Greetings, Eric Quacker, naturopath. Thanks for tuning in and checking out this video. I've got quite a few topics to cover today, but uh, let's just start with IgA, secretory IgA. I often get questions from people regarding stool tests. You know, what, this, what does this marker mean? Can you explain more in detail what this marker means? I've had my you know, doctor or naturopath do a test on me. I got the results back and I don't really understand exactly what these results mean or they weren't explained to me properly. So I've got a question here from somebody over in the States and this question is, what is secretory IgA deficiency of the immunoglobulin A? Why you should know, what should I know about it? What does it do? So this person's quite inquisitive and really wants to understand what secretory IgA is. So let's talk a bit more about that in this video. So what you may not know about is that, or you, you may well know, I'm not sure what your level of medical knowledge is, that the, body, the body's immune system makes up various antibodies. So these are basically cells that help to counter unwanted responses in the body or unwanted organisms. You know, so they help to clean the body up and, get, and basically keep the body healthy and balanced. So there are different types of antibodies. You've got several in your bloodstream. You've got you know certain types that are only found, for example, in breast milk, certain types found in, in tears or saliva. But the one we're going to talk about is called secretory IgA, and it's produced by the mucous membranes of the body. So the mucous membranes, these are basically parts of the body you know, exposed uh, to where they secrete a mucus into their environment. For example, if we think about the ear, nose, and the throat, you know, there's a lot of secretory IgA going on in that particular area. The whole digestive tract, the intestines, the stomach, you know, everywhere throughout this area where there's mucus, uh, you know, being secreted, you'll find secretory IgA. So the body starts making large amounts of this, up to two or three thousand, you know, grams per day, I believe. Is it milligrams or micrograms? Or It's a very, very tiny, and I think it's grams. It's actually grams. So that's quite a bit. So the body needs large amounts of this antibody, basically, to help defend itself from, you know, all kinds of unwanted, you know, visitors and pathogens. So don't confuse secretory IgA with IgA that you normally would find in the blood test. Unless it's got the little S in front of it, it's not secretory or secretory or, or I think other people might call it by different names. So the other IgA that you find, you know, by way of a blood test, you'll, that will often be bundled with, for example, IgM, you know, IgE, other antibodies will be bundled with that particular one. And this is often done as part of an allergy test or, or a specific immune test your doctor will do this. This will be a blood draw, you know, blood test. I'm talking more about a stool sample with the SIgA or a saliva test that was done to determine the, the secretory IgA. Remember, it's called secretory, so it's coming from the mucous membranes. So you need to know about this. It's very important because if you've got a very low number, then you need to look further afield at why the number is so low. So the SIGA help basically to grab hold of things they don't like in the, you know, in the mucous membrane and transport it out of the body, either through way of you know, blowing the nose you know, or out through the bowel motions. You know, it'll, it'll get basically passed out and dealt with that way. So you need to look further afield. If you've got very, very low numbers, you know, that's a quite a concern because there's a drain on the immune system in that case. You could have had a, an un, you know, unknown, unwanted candida problem. You could have had a bacterial problem. It needs further checking out to see why the number is so low. But the other thing it could be, it could be food allergy. And this is quite common too, is when the IgA is very, very, very low, it can be a significant problem. So the numbers I'm thinking of are 0 to 200. I think this is micrograms per, you know, 100 mil or DC, DC liter of blood. <coughs> so when the IgA level falls, you know, well under 200, if you've got levels, say, of 10 or 15, uh, you know, this is very, very low indeed. When the levels go really high, that's a different, you know, story altogether. But healthy people will have a level around about 130, 150, maybe 170 micrograms, which is the UG slash DL. You know, so depending on your scale, you know, that you're looking at. So, but I've seen uh, some secretory IgA levels in stool tests, you know, as low as less, you know, extremely low, like 0 0.5 for some people. So barely detectable. Right to the other end of extreme, I've seen them as high as 2,500, uh, you know, when they've had a very, very powerful inflammatory response in the body. So when you've got a low number, uh, the, the great thing would have been to have a history of IgA, you know, perhaps a test performed every six or 12 months 
to track to see what's going on with your digestive tract and your health in general. It's not an expensive test. And you should be able to get a saliva test done for about 100 bucks, in my, uh, from what I'm thinking. If it's part of a stool test, it shouldn't be that pricey. Uh, you know, um, actually, as a standalone test, it's probably going to be cheaper because if you bundle that again with the comprehensive stool test, you could be looking at two or $300. So remember, don't confuse this with the blood test. The blood test is entirely different and not really what we're talking about. We're talking about the saliva, S-I-G-A, or the uh, you know, digestive secretory IGA. That's what we're talking about. So there are different ways you can get the level up. So let's talk a bit about that now. You can get it up. and It's a great thing to do to get this number up to good levels because it will definitely improve your defenses of your body and stop unwanted uh, microorganisms from forming biofilms and whole colonies in your body. So you really want to try and keep the numbers up. Not too high, not ridiculously high, but you know, in, in the ballpark where I mentioned. It's just going to keep your defenses right up. Probiotics are very important to keep it up. And you'll find that the low, the low secretory IgA is often found in conjunction with leaky gut syndrome anyway. So remember, if the numbers are low, also check potentially for food allergy because IgA is also used as a tag so the body will actually tag foods that are good, that it's known. Like it'll put a sticker on their back. So yeah, mate, you're good to go through. And every time they pat some guy on the back, you know, it's another sticker down. It's another IGA down. So your numbers could be low if they don't build up because of a good brush border too. So you need probiotics to build good numbers of IGA because you do tend to use a lot of these guys up. Because remember, you're making, your body's making grams per day to tag good things that it likes, but also to kick bad things out. So you need to keep the numbers up. Probiotics are a good start. Digestive enzymes are quite good to consider. And of course, eating prebiotic foods. I mentioned this in some of my other videos. So go and check out any other videos on the Candida Crusher YouTube channel on prebiotic foods, because you'll need to incorporate these into your diet to give yourself a really good chance you know, to get those numbers up. So remember, people who have parasites, Candida, bad bacteria, um, you know, food allergies, one or multi food allergies, these are people that typically going to have lower secretory IgA. If you've got very high secretory IgA, again, this is where it pays to do more extensive stool testing to determine if you've got any inflammatory markers. <coughs> Excuse me, because that could mean that you're looking more at Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or inflammatory bowel disease, you know, or polyps or things like that. So uh, then you look for blood and mucus and, and other kinds of things as well. So higher. Um, you know, we, we do tend to find as well that it's more common to find the lower one, but we do find the higher one. And of course, the higher it is, the more urgent the need to find, you know, where, uh, you know, what's causing this high amount of IgA to come up. So I hope that gives you some useful information today on uh, secretory IgA, you know, what it is, how important it is, sort of the numbers. And you can do a saliva test as a standalone. Uh, you can sometimes do a standalone stool test or a bundle with another stool test. Please subscribe to my channel because I enjoy making these videos. Uh, do also check out the other videos on this channel. There's over a thousand videos on the Candida Crusher channel now. So this will be uh, one video in a series I'm going to complete on you know, different elements that make up a, a stool analysis. If you, want my, uh, if you want my white document, my Candida Crusher shopping list, please click on the link below in the description box. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.